everybody, and welcome to Wild Rivers Film Radio, the radio show and podcast for the Wild Rivers Film Festival brought to you by KCIW 100.7. And we are here in the studio. I'm Kat Liddell, and I'm here with Amanda Whittemore. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Kat, just fantastic filmtastic, as we say in the film world. I love it so much. (laughs) Yeah, no, and, and then exciting things going on with the film festival. Of course, we're always getting ready for the next one. The next one's coming up in August, but it's going to be here sooner. 165 days, I think. You have the exact number of days. (laughs) Sure do, yeah. 165. (laughs) You don't say, my goodness. And you know what? We've got lots of fun things to talk about today. We have a special guest in the studio. We're going to be talking in a minute here with Bev Jude, who is also on the board of the Wild Rivers Film Festival, along with me and some other cool folks. And we are going to start first with, uh, I guess you have a little bit of a PSA here, Amanda, um, for some needs at the KCIW radio station. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are here, obviously, in the KCIW radio station, and our center is looking for sound engineers and if anybody has any idea how important sound engineering is Mm -hmm. to radio film television documentaries everything and anything that has audio Mm -hmm. pretty important position to learn about and how to get connected into perhaps a career that you would dream of Mm -hmm. and um Actually, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to go in. I'm going to go get educated. I'm going to actually leave the show to you guys. You're leaving us? <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving us for this session? For this session, I, you know, I got my 165 days warning in. And yeah. we got, we got, when our filmmakers come into town, we will be interviewing them. Mm-hmm. And so to make sure that this is fully capable and that we're all able to do the jobs we need to do, we're going to give our radio editor, Tom, some support. And make sure that he doesn't have to record every single one of them. So I'm going to go start my education and recruit anyone else who's coming with me. Mm-hmm. We're here at the KCIW station at 625 Checo Avenue. Volunteers, anyone who's ready to get a sound editing experience under the belt, do join me. All right. Okay, we'll leave you to it, Amanda. All right. right. Thank well, you. I guess I am off to run the ship here. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Bev. See you later. Bye. Hey. All right. So Amanda has left the building for this session, but uh, she's actually safely in the other room with uh, Tom Bozak, our our audio engineer here at KCIW. He's our lead audio person, and he does so much around here. So as Amanda was saying, they are currently looking for volunteers who are willing to learn audio engineering and and sound editing for their radio programs. They are a nonprofit volunteer-run organization And you can learn more about volunteer opportunities by going to KCIW.org and reaching out to them on there. They would be so happy to have your help. And that really is a cool skill to learn, having a little bit of that skill under my belt myself. And uh, one of my first husbands being an audio engineer who was quite talented himself. It it is a fun, fun skill to learn. I got to say, I can't I can't talk about like how valuable that is enough. But hey, while uh, Amanda is getting in there learning the ropes for audio engineering, uh, I'd like to sit down with one of the board members for the Wild Rivers Film Festival. So I'm currently in the studio here with Bev Jude. Bev, why don't you uh, say hi to the audience and uh, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, hello out there, and thank you so much for having me on tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to our chat. Mm-hmm. and sharing more information about the Wild Rivers Film Festival. Yeah. So um, why don't you tell us, like, how did you end up initially getting involved in the Wild Rivers Film Festival board? Well, it's really um, interesting, and it was kind of an accident. Uh, my granddaughter was in the, um, and is still in the um, dance studio here locally, Wild Rivers Dance, and they made a video back during COVID in 2020 and in that video, um, Sky wrote the screenplay, and one thing after another happened, and we actually made that video with people that she met through her her Harvard online course. Mm-hmm. Um, after, I think it was probably a year later, we were invited to go to Orlando, to the, the Orlando Film Festival, mm-hmm. and they were showing our film. Mm -hmm. So it felt like a a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea whether our film looked like something homemade or if it looked professional, but we were excited. Mm -hmm. So we went to the preview over there in Orlando, and we stayed for a week. 
we got acquainted with uh, Dan Springen and all the folks who run the Orlando Film Festival. And when we saw our film there, we were absolutely amazed. Mm -hmm. It was so professional. Mm -hmm. They had done edits of every single kind that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it just looked like a real professionally made film. It didn't look like something we made in our little town. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were absolutely impressed. Um, and we wished at that time that we had something like that in our town. It was our film and we were showing it our, uh, in Orlando mm -hmm. and not very many people were able to go to that. So the few of us that were there, we got to talking and had more conversations with Dan who said, I happen to have this thing called a film festival in a box that I'd like to try. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we would like to be the volunteers for that. Mm -hmm. And it kind of took a, a life of its own from there. Um, Dan came and did some proposals with us. He showed us what we could do. He encouraged us. And we knew that our community really would benefit from this in so many different ways. It was bringing art to our rural little seaside community uh, in a way that they hadn't had before. And it would lead to so many other things if we could really get this up and running. And we thought about the education uh, from all of our young people who might be interested in film careers. You know, you were mentioning earlier how uh, we need sound technicians. Well, there's a whole host of jobs that can be done behind the scenes in film production, as well as out in front of that camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, if we could get this up and running here in our town, it would actually result in local people getting jobs, learning new skills, um, maybe having dreams come true, something that they had never thought about having an opportunity to do. They would be able to do it. Yeah. Now, that was that sounds like such an, a fantastic and like wonderful first experience with filmmaking to have that have that experience essentially come to you and then have you come out and be an ambassador for that. And and be able to bring that information back to the community and work with everybody. That is that is so tremendous. I'm so happy that that worked out that way. And um, oh, for context for our listeners as well, the name of that film uh, that was done through the Wild Rivers Coast Foundation for Dance was um, a small town Nutcracker story. So yes. it was based directly on uh, the Nutcracker, the uh, the ballet, and uh, the the ballet that they put on every year that they weren't able to put on because of COVID happening. So that was just a strange storm of circumstances that led to that project being created. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you talked a lot about um, seeing the potential of, um, you know, bringing a film festival to Brookings, um, you know, bringing more opportunities for people to get involved with the arts while also gaining practical professional skills. Um, and this uh, this sort of thing, uh, nonprofit management is not um, new territory for you, if I if I understand correctly, uh, you actually you have uh, quite a few years of experience in the nonprofit sector. Do you want to tell us more about that? I do have a lot of experience in the nonprofit sector, but it's um, uh, a different nature. I was in the defense centers industry. Mm -hmm. I worked for Lockheed, um, and I they, while they're a for profit corporation, they also have a nonprofit um, credit union. Yeah. That, that I did some work with mm -hmm. uh, in something called organization development. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to go from, they wanted to expand from being just at the Lockheed um, facility and for their people, they wanted to expand to their entire community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was instrumental in helping them put the plans together to make that a reality. Mm -hmm. um, I also did some union negotiation at that time. Mm -hmm. I've worked for Sutter Health, which is part of that, is right here in our community. Mm -hmm. um, I worked both at the local level here in Crescent City, and I worked down in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, same area of study, organization development, and we were looking at different ways of track tracking licensure and uh, how to expand the that and the joint commission surveys that they do for um, sat customer satisfaction or patient satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think those are my biggest main nonprofits that I've worked for. We, you know, and like that that administrative level of experience that you bring to the nonprofit board for such a small like arts based nonprofit like us, like I have to say from my perspective that that is a tremendous asset to our organization. 
And like for for people out there who um, maybe they have moved to this area and they're retired, but they have that kind of corporate nonprofit background. It's like, you know, if you uh, are looking for volunteer opportunities, look at your local nonprofits. Like it is it is such a tremendous boon to us to have your experience brought to the board, Bev. And um, if everybody who retires to this area that has that experience wanted to give back to their community in that way, it would be so amazing to see like the growth and potential that our nonprofits here locally could have. So we're so glad you're volunteering our, your time for us. Absolutely. Like it's been tremendous working with you. Thank you. Yeah. And like just the, just the the film industry. So the film's pretty new for you. The art side of it is fairly new for you. Yes, it is. And what was it like um, putting on and seeing a film festival go through its first year here in this small town setting? What was it what was it like seeing like that, like come from essentially nothing and then going, OK, we do have a product to present to people. Like what was that experience like for you on that uh, level? For me, it felt a lot like a tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> there were those times, you know, behind the scenes where we were administratively putting things together, putting it on paper. And um, the difference between working for a larger corporation uh, and working this at our film festival Mm -hmm. um, nonprofit board is that this is extremely hands-on, yeah, way more than I've ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. And that has been fun and challenging. Um, and I think when you see that work, it may go in pieces. You may see a little bit of uh, like someone making the signs and someone else ordering the sweatshirts and, mm -hmm. you know, someone else worrying about the filmmakers housing when they're going to be here or how they're going to get transported from one location to another. All of those individual pieces, the tsunami part was when they all came together. Yeah. And it was the day of the film festival and suddenly it was here and it went off so smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of learnings from it, things to make this even better Mm -hmm. and um, easier the next time around. And I was amazed at how much support we did get from the community mm -hmm. and how happy people were when they participated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially like, I mean, there were things to like not be happy about, like just generally going on in the community at the time we were doing this in the middle of a wildfire that shipped <laughs> yeah. in the highway, you know. And um, and I mean, too, it was it was interesting, too, because there were a lot of people from outside the community who were coming in from the surrounding displaced from areas like Gasky, too. And I actually met a few people who it was just like, otherwise, I'm going to be sitting in a hotel room just worrying. We had people who bought passes for that just to, you know, have something to take their mind off of things while they were, were worried about the wildfire that was passing through the area. And it was it was just nice, like as an opportunity to get to meet people and know that like we we were able to to provide something for them to just like sit there and just breathe and feel normal for a minute too as well. So like I, as as unfortunate as those circumstances were, it was like under those circumstances, everybody worked so well under that pressure, you know, and, and still pulling did. off a good event. So yeah, no, that was that was tremendous to see that all come together like that. The other fantastic mm -hmm. thing about it was that there were no barriers mm -hmm. between filmmakers and the audience. Yeah. Uh, there was, you know, upfront personal conversations that were happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my grandkids come, mm -hmm. and I thought some things may be over their heads because they were 11 and 13 mm -hmm. at the time, but they loved it. And I found them critiquing the films yeah. just like them. anyone else would. Mm -hmm. And they were not afraid to talk to the filmmakers and ask the questions. Yeah. And it was such a, an inspiring opportunity for them that I hope this coming year mm -hmm. um, everyone comes out for it mm -hmm. and bring your kids. Absolutely. Well, I mean, like from that perspective, too, like, you know, bringing your grandkids to an event like this, like I see so much potential in you know, having a film festival here locally that you can bring your kids to and expose them to that sort of stuff and have them be able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with filmmakers and have that be very accessible so that they can see, like, a career like that, if that's something that they're interested in, does not necessarily have to be out of reach for them. Uh, and we have examples of people in our community who grew up here who are now working in the film industry. We were lucky enough to have a submission and, and screen a film that uh, starred a person who had come up through the school system here, decided they wanted to do acting as a career, and then went and did something about it. So Matt McVeigh brought his film Gemini Project here, and it was so nice to see him come back to the community, have his family be involved in it, and go like, hey, this is 
these sorts of projects are things you can do anywhere in the world, including here in Brookings. So absolutely, I'm so glad your grandkids got something positive out of that. That's really cool. Oh, they yeah. loved it. It's an unforgettable experience for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, one of them's an old hat now, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> just like being on a on a soundstage yeah. and being uh, being in a film production as well. So. You never know. We might see, see some more coming out from Danny there. You never know. Yeah, and, and they mm-hmm. actually have followed a couple of the directors. Yeah. You know, as they've progressed. And we've seen mm-hmm. two of the films that they saw mm-hmm. uh, go into distribution. I know. Yeah, that's incredible. Like seeing films, like it's incredible sitting here in the audience at a festival. You know, people are showcasing their films, essentially trying to attract the attention of distributors in the hopes that they'll get picked up by movie theaters. And when you see, a film and like realize like just a few months later that it made that cut. It's just like you feel like you're a part of something happening. That's just incredible. Yeah, it absolutely um, was. Absolutely. Well, I was going to say, since you have the opportunity to sit through uh, a lot of those films with the kids, I mean, do you do any like particular favorites come to mind for you from uh, last year's festival that you gosh. highlight? There was a favorite. I, mm-hmm. I can't quite remember the title of it, but it was a short mm-hmm. and... Uh, it was the one where the, I think it was bloody something. Mm-hmm. And uh, the criminal, there's a there's a criminal who bursts into a restaurant. There's a young lady waiting there on a blind date. Okay. Do you remember that I one? Didn't, I was running around like doing uh, doing uh, VIP and like director ladies on stuff. It was so very, I, I very short. I think it's yeah. in an eight minute film. Okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. the, uh, the uh, criminal breaks into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it's pouring rain outside, and everybody looks up, and the girl thinks, oh, I guess that's my date. Mm -hmm. She doesn't notice the hand cuff and the blood running down his hand. So he sits down at Mm -hmm. the table with her. They have some conversation, Mm -hmm. and then the police come in. Of course. And um, it goes very quickly, Mm -hmm. and the lights go out in the restaurant, and there's a gunshot. Oh. Now, you don't know who died. Oh, no. Okay. And it's just one of those, like, boom, like, yeah. done, blackout. Uh, but well, that one was a favorite with all the kids who were there. Yeah, yeah. And they were carrying on about it could have gone this way and it mm-hmm. could have gone that way. Mm-hmm. And what would they have done different if it was their film? Mm-hmm. It was really an, a great conversation mm-hmm. that I never would have anticipated. Yeah that level of involvement from them so quick in an eight-minute film. I know. It's amazing the kind of stories that you can tell in just a few minutes, too. Um, We very recently at uh, one of our Art Walk movie talks that the film festival is putting on monthly, every uh, Saturday Art Walk now, uh, we we show a a short film essentially on a loop, and whenever we can bring a filmmaker in for a film discussion, uh, we try to make that available, too. And the film that we showed in January was one of the film festival favorites there, which is Parking Spot which was another like barely eight minute long film, but like told a whole story there in that eight minute, eight minute thread that was absurdist and like action packed and and funny. And and it is just it is amazing seeing what these filmmakers can do with such a short amount of time. It's really incredible. So, um, yeah, like for people who go like, oh, it's just the shorts. Like if you're if you've got some time on a film festival circuit to see what shorts are playing, do not skip it. Like, do not oh, skip absolutely. it. Like you can see some wonderful things happening there that might you never know turn into a longer movie down the road if they yeah. uh, if they get enough uh, attention on their story. So, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I think this it. year um, on our agenda list is to see more of the shorts. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like there's so much to talk about. Yeah, you can see like four or five in a single chunk and go like, okay, uh, like what did you like the best out of that? Like, did these all fall in a certain theme? Did that theme track for you? Who was the best? Like. You know, and then the, the conversations can get quite lively, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's absolutely incredible. Well, hey, um, you've also been a constant presence at uh, a lot of our um, Saturday Art Walk, our movie talk uh, events. And uh, we have a screening coming up this next upcoming Art Walk, which I believe is the 9th of March. And uh, that's going to be running from 3 to 6 p.m. at our office, 615 Checo Avenue, right across the hallway from Whimsical Griffin. And uh, I believe the film that we are going to be playing is going to be, yes, another short film on a loop. You have multiple opportunities to see it, 3 to 6 p.m. It's Coyote and the Star Girls. Um, and do you have some information about like what is going to make that film uh, particularly interesting to people in this area? I have just a little bit of information on that mm-hmm. film. It was made by the Talawa D Nation, mm-hmm. uh, and it was their students and uh, just high-level overview that I understand is that they started off 
they had some ideas that came out of artwork that they had done okay. at, at the younger grade level. And as the kids got together, they fleshed out the idea and came up with uh, how did they learn their language mm -hmm. and where did it come from? And so hence it became the Star Girls. And it was a night. Uh, they expanded it to include other grade levels. And as the other grade levels got involved, they refined it and expanded it, came up with the scripts. Um, and from there, they actually published, um, in their tribes, they published that film. That's incredible. And it's a hit. Yeah, that sounds like an incredible, like, just collaborative project, like, from, from the youngest students all the way up to the upper level students. Like, getting that many youngsters of, of that wide of an age range working on something, it's always so incredible to see people coming together to do that. And um, it sounds like they've also they've had the opportunity to have this film uh, screened screened down in San Francisco as well. Uh, so this um, this is not like the first time that it's premiering anywhere. They've already they've already opened on the festival circuit, and it sounds like they're doing very well down there. And and so this is just a wonderful news for them. Um, also, if, if I uh, understand correctly, um, since they're tying it into like um, learning the the Talawadani language um, that that's tying in with several other initiatives that they have right now to teach and preserve their language as well, which I know is like a huge priority for a lot of tribal nations in the country right now. And it's really cool that they chose film as an avenue for for advancing that initiative. So so congratulations to the Talawadani Nation, and I'm really excited for us to screen that and get to talk more with some of these incredible kids. I'm yeah. really excited to mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming up quick, mm -hmm. and I hope that. Uh, we have a lot of folks come out for it. Yeah, and yeah. because it's on the loop, it's uh, easy to make the the time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about a very specific time. You can come and just kind of fit in to the loop itself. Mm -hmm. And yes, it should be noted too for for people going like, "Am I going to miss this? Am I going to miss something important?" Like when we say there's lots of opportunities to see it, there are lots like uh, parking spot, that other very short film that we were just discussing previously. This one is only a few minutes long. So even if you come in at like the tail end of a screening, wait a few minutes, it'll start up again. Um, we definitely, we love this short film format and being able to talk about these films on a constant loop. Do not stress. There's plenty of opportunities to see it. You can be very flexible with your art walk planning on it too as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding we will also have the presence of some tribe members who will be there to answer questions mm -hmm. uh, and help us understand what they learned, their experiences in making this, yeah, and yeah. how it became successful. Yeah, don't just take our word for it. You'll be able to hear directly from from some of the filmmakers and tribal members themselves, which is really awesome that they're coming in to talk about that, for yes. sure. Yes, definitely. Uh, well, again, that's 3 to 6 p.m. That's going to be happening at the Wild Rivers Film Festival office. That's 615 Checo Avenue, across the hallway from the Whimsical Griffin. And, uh, of course, like many other Art Walk venues, of course, we will have plenty of, of hors d'oeuvres and, and uh, complimentary beverages to go around as well. And uh, I, I heard the spread last time was, was very, very nice, too. So, so I'm sure uh, this time around we will not be disappointing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely great. Uh, well, as far as any other upcoming things to do with the film festival, Bev, is there anything coming down the pipeline or anything that we're planning for right now that you really want people to know about or that you're particularly excited about? Uh, what I would really want the community to know is that we are seeking sponsors mm -hmm. um, and donations mm -hmm. uh, to make this one of the very best film festivals and really expand it, make it bigger. Uh, this year, we're hoping to really launch our education series. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do that, we need a lot more community involvement. Mm -hmm. So uh, anybody who's interested in sponsorship at all or donations, uh, please go to our website and or reach out to any one of us. Absolutely. We'd and be glad to talk to you yeah, about it. Yeah. And if you're wondering uh, where to go to find us online, of course, uh, you can find us at wildriversfilmfestival.com. Uh, you can reach out by email. It's info at wildriversfilmfestival.com. And you can also find the Wild Rivers Film Festival on Instagram and Facebook. So there's plenty of channels for you to get in touch. And uh, we already have. Again, uh, we're, we're racking up committed sponsors and people recommitting from prior sponsorships from last year. Uh, so the Oregon Film Commission is recommitting their sponsorship to us. 
We also just recently brought on Beacon Broadband as a sponsor. Uh, so thank you, Bill Gersky down at Beacon Broadband for, uh, for being willing to sit down and talk to us. Uh, Musser Olson County is recommitting for another sponsorship as well. And I know that Three Penny Theater Co. is also committing to another sponsorship. So uh, if you are interested in sponsoring and getting your business name and logo up on our uh, big banners before the screening of every film, uh, if you're interested in being on our, our promotional materials, such as our posters and our, our programs and all that other good stuff, um, and just getting some sponsor love for your business out there, uh, we really hope to hear from you. Uh, we would be so happy to plaster your business name over as many materials as we possibly can get our hands on. So <laughs> we are happy to work with sponsors on that one. And it doesn't have to be monetary. If you've got in-kind goods that you think may be valuable as well, that is valuable to a nonprofit, incredibly so. So please don't be shy. Again, you can reach out to us at wildriversfilmfestival.com, info at wildriversfilmfestival.com, or find us on Instagram and Facebook. Well, Bev, thank you so much for joining us here today. And uh, I'm really looking forward to having you back on the show. Maybe we can get you into some guest hosting. We'll see down the road. Yeah, it'd be really nice to hear from you again. And thank you so much for, for being a part of this board from the, from the beginning of this project and for all of the experience that you bring to it. Well, thank you very much for having me and all the opportunities here. Yeah. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Bev. All right, everyone. That's all that we have for you today for the Wild Rivers Film Radio Show. You are listening to us on 100.7 FM on KCIW. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And we cannot wait to see you at the festival and beyond. (laughs) 